Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good, afternoon, good evening to all my dear friends and, and students for this DADM uh, 2 course which is Data Analysis and Decision Making 2. And we are in the third lecture as you can see from the slide and this total, this total course DADM 2 is for 12 weeks which is 30 hours and each week we will have 5 lectures each being for half an hour and as you know that after each um, week we will have one assignment. So, total in total we will have 12 assignments plus there would be one final end term examination and each week assignments would be based on that week which has just been covered. So, if you remember we are discussing about utility functions, we were discussing also that depending on the outcomes. Now, I did mention different connotations of outcomes and how the utility functions uh, would change depending on the outcomes. They can be the, the number of outcomes which are favorable to one, one decisions, they can be the utility function themselves or they can be just numbers without mentioning anything about UW. And we then uh, consider two different utility functions, two different decisions and considering different combinations of 2 into 2, 4, we saw that how the decisions can change depending on the total value of the utility. We are always trying to find out the maximum of the utility. And I also did mention without solving that if the utility is the same, we will consider the variance to be used to rank the decisions and if both the utilities expected value and the variances are given, we will use a combination of them where we rank uh, the ratio of, if we take the ratio of expected value to variance, we will rank them from the highest to the lowest. If we take the inverse of that, that is the variance with respect to the expected value, we will rank them from the lowest to the highest. So, they can be different ways of trying to ranking depending on what your statistic is based on which you are trying to take a decision. Now, further continuing utility analysis. So, in the problem which we have considered uh, where um, there was a value of minus for the linear function and if we remember we did mention if the utility function is negative we will purposefully consider them to be 0 even though that may not be true. But in practicality for problem solving for this course we will take them 0 until unless mentioned in the problem. So, now the question is that with, with the and then we also considered a problem where you had a government uh, bond uh, of 10 lakhs and the utility was uh, w to the power half which is a power utility and other hand you have three different options with probabilities of 20 percent, 40 percent, 40 percent and the outcomes were given. Um, the government one was not 10 lakhs, it was 6 lakhs, sorry my mistake and the outcomes for the other um, um, non-deterministic decisions were 10, 5 and 1. And then we found out the corresponding expected value and, and found out the that the government one was given a higher expected value than the um, probabilistic one, hence we take the government one. So, there can be different variants of the problems, the probabilities can change, the values uh, can change that the, the rupees lakhs wealth can change, the utility function change, they can be different ways of trying to understand rather than using the probability as uh, probably mass function we can we can have probably density function function also then you have to need to find out the expected value corresponding to the fact that we integrate the values rather than um, sum them up so the question is that would the above problem give a different answer if we use an utility function of the form w to the power half plus c now c is basically is a positive um, uh, or a negative quantity. So, if basically it is a positive or negative quantity uh, and, and if you are only con con considering the linear function only not comparing against each other. So, if we take the value of 0 to be the least value then obviously for higher negative values of c all of them would become 0 so and obviously they would be at the same rank. But if we consider the value of c to be to be negative highly negative. And, and then we consider that 
w to the power half plus c and the expected value is also considered in the negative terms, then obviously, we can rank them. So, the highest negative ones would be ranked the least and the lowest negative ranks more towards 0 and positive numbers would be ranked the highest. And similarly, if c is positive, it will would not basically change the ranking system, because they would basically in the values would come out in the positive um, uh, range. So, the ranking relative ranking remains the same. Consider a second example um, or a third example. So, in a span of 6 days, the price of a security fluctuates and a person makes his or her transaction only at the following prices and we assume the utility function to be a logarithmic uh, or uh, utility function which is log of the price. And in the table which is shown, we have we have the days which is given as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to so the first column. The prices are given which is in the second column. So, there are different instances of the prices 1000 rupees, 975, 950, 1050, 925, 1025. So, these are I am considering a random values. And then in the third column, we find out the utility of those prices. So, we find out the log of 1000, log of 975, so on and so forth and the utilities are given. Now, the outcomes are given. So, the outcomes here basically means the number which is n w, which means that if we take a snapshot, these days uh, now let us consider the days concept not there. If we consider the price of 35, it technically means that the number of outcomes which were favorable to the price of 1000 out of some instances of the of the values which I have noted, they are 35 in number. Similarly, if I consider uh, the value of 925 rupees or dollars or yens, whatever the price is, then the number of instances which are favorable for that comes out to be 5. So, if I find out the numbers given in the second last column, then the corresponding probabilities which we will find out using that outcomes would be n w divided by summation of n w that so that it will be 35 divided by 100, because 100 is the sum of, of that set of values which is there in the second last column. And uh, when we add them up it uh, as it is 100, so 35 divided by 100 comes out to be 0 0.35 correspondingly the pro other probabilities are 0 0.15, 0 0.05 and 0 0.15. So, if you add them, it def definitely comes out to be 1. Now, if you basically multiply, so what we are going to do is, we will multiply the, you want, we want to find out the expected value. Expected value would be the sum of utility into N w by summation of n w. So, this is the equation we need to find out. So, I use different colors. Let me use the green one. So, the utilities are given here. The number n w's are given here. I am just marking the columns. And uh, the value of summation n w's, once we find it out, it is 100. So, the probabilities which we want to have is given here. So, we can find it out and do the calculations accordingly. Now, in case if utility function is given as um, a function p to the power 1 fourth or p to the power 0 0.25, then the expected utility comes out to be 33.63 percent. 33.63 in value terms. So, you can basically make a decision accordingly depending on different values are there, find out uh, the, the um, utilities, multiply them by the probabilities and find out the expected value and rank them accordingly. Now, we will consider different properties or important properties of utilities. So, the general properties of utility functions we will go through the two main one and come repeatedly come back to these in order to solve our problems. So, one is the problem, problem the concept of non cessation. So, the first restriction placed on, placed on the utility function is that it, it is consistent with the more being preferred to less. That means, more I give you more you want. That means, more it is better, more the merrier. 
So, obviously, it would mean that in, in, in practical sense it may not be true, because say for example, in many of the consumptions problem, uh, after a certain limit your marginal utility will start decreasing. So, but still we will consider that um, point not to be true for the problems when you are trying to solve the optimization problems. So, this means that between any two certain investments or amount of value being w, value means the wealth. So, if you take it uh, the u w would always be less than u w plus 1 that means u w plus the utility based on w plus delta w would always be greater than u w which means the first derivative of the utility function with respect to w would always be positive. Now, the question will come later on that this positive value which is there whether in the case when we take the second derivative whether it is increasing at an increasing rate, increasing as a constant rate or increasing at decreasing rate that would basically differentiate and give us the concept of the second property which are going to come now. The next property is basically considered the concept of risk something to do with the risk. So, if we consider the investors or the decision makers perception of absolute risk, then we will have the concept of the property given categorized under three categories. One is the concept of risk aversion that means, I am want to avoid risk. One is risk neutrality that means, I am indifferent to risk and the third one is basically risk seeking that means, I want to take risk. So, in this case what the point which I mentioned just few minutes back or few seconds back that the utility function is always increasing with respect to w and that is the property of non cessation which means the first derivative of u w with respect to w is always positive. Now, the second point which is there on the slide it will mean which I mentioned that the first derivative can increase at an increasing rate can increase at a constant rate and increase at a decreasing rate and that will give us the properties. I will come to that into details within few minutes that will give us the properties of risk avoidance or risk aversion, risk neutrality or risk indifferent and risk seeking property of any decision maker. So, let us consider a very simple example. So, consider in on, on one table there is uh, given and this values which is given which you see 2 and 1 they would not make a much sense, but let us consider those values as given as values only. So, consider you if you invest um, an amount 2 or a unit 2 and uh, when you basically uh, toss the coin it is uh, actual coin unbiased coin probabilities are half and half. If a head comes that investment which you make would basically yield you the value of say for example, 2 and uh, in the other case whatever investment which you have made consider that as for the time being as 1. So, 1 you invest you get 2 and another case 1 you invest if the tail comes you do not get any money. So, if I want to find out that what and this is an unbiased coin remember. So, if I tell you that if I keep doing that experiment tossing the coin finding out that in half probability I get 2 half I get nothing. So, in the long run you will say the expected value is 1 why because 2 into half that means 2 is basically the value which I am getting and remember this 2 is the value I am giving an I am not talking about utility no it is a just a value and you consider the value as it is and, and that is the value which accrues to you. So, the probability would half would be multiplied by 2 plus half another half would be multiplied by 0 the expected value is 1. So, leave aside this experiment come to the other experiment on table 2 there is a Sholay coin. So, all of you must have seen the film Sholay and those uh, outside India may not if they have not seen that you should definitely see the uh, film of Sholay. So, in the Sholay coin um, the, the coin is biased in the sense both are heads considered. So, if they are head whichever way I toss the probability of head coming is 1. That means, when I when I toss the probability is 1 and the investment which I get is also 1. So, if I tell you to find out the expected value you will immediately multiply the probability of 1 into the outcome which is 1 and the expected value is 1. 
So, if you consider the, the scenario on, on table 1 and scenario on table 2, both give you the same expected value. Now, where the differentiation starts? Now, if I ask this value is 2, see if I ask all of you who are taking this class that which of the decision would you take on table 1 where is the unbiased coin or table 2 where is the Scholar coin? No, maximum of the people or, or maybe all of them would definitely choose the first one which is in table 1. Because you are even if the expected values are same in the long run, you are always thinking that your main focus is on probability half where you will win 2, 2 units. Now, let me change the scenario of the game. The coin remains as unbiased in table 1 and coin remains as the Scholle coin and the biased coin with probability 1 on table 2. But the values which were 2 here which you see now increases to say for example, 200 and the, and the value remains 0 while the value 1 which is there on, on the other table is 1 becomes now 100. So, again I ask you the question. So, again I tell you that if I want to find out the expected value for these two decisions on table 1 and table 2, you can find out that 200 into half plus 0 into half gives me 100 as a unit and then 100 into 1 on the table 2 gives us 100. So, the expected values are same. Then again I ask you the question. Now, consider that out of all of you who are taking the class, some may be a little bit doubtful of taking decision 1 which is on table 1 because now you think that uh, your, your focus of attention is slowly shifting to the case that what if a tail comes you lose everything that means all this 200 is gone. Let me again increase the value of 200 to say for example, 20,000. I am just increasing at very high, huge jump. So, 2 becomes 20,000, 0 remains 0, 1 becomes 10,000. Again the expected values would be same 10,000, 10,000. But now again if I ask you the question which decision we will take with table 1 and table 2, slowly you will see that as I keep increasing the value at some point of time, all people would now be slowly be indifferent that they do not know which one decision to take and as this value 2000, 20,000 becomes 2 lakhs, 10,000 becomes uh, 1 lakh and, and, and is 2 and 1 these values basically are multiplied by higher and higher values, you will see that all of you would basically be tempted to take a decision which is the certainty event which is on the table 2. So, this gives us the con concept that at some point of time. Um, any human decision we are willing to take can basically be of any three categories depending on the wealth, depending on my experience, depending what my risk attitude is, depending on my age, all these things would basically dictate that how I take the decision. So, let me come back to what is mentioned in the slide. So, price for investing is one which I already mentioned and it is a fair gamble, fair in, in the sense because the probabilities are half and half in the sense that his value is exactly equal to the decision of not investing which is there on the right hand side on table 2. And we will use this concept of fair gamble later on. Now, the equations which are given are just simple equation and notation of whatever I have done. So, thus if I consider the, the, the investments or decisions as I 1 and I 2. So, this means my decisions are like this this is I 1 with probability P I 1, this is I 2 with probability I 2. So, 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 the utility and on, on the other hand obviously, you will basically have the deterministic event D i. So, the probability is here it would be half, probability here it will be half, technically it will be half in, in a fair gamble. But now, I will consider the probabilities as P i 1 and P i 2. So, now let me go to the highlighter. So, this part, so obviously probability P i 1 comes here and then I 1 gets replaced by the utility because I 1 is the value. So, once I basically assume the utility function to be some functional form, 
so that utility becomes u i 1 as noted now. Now, if I go to i 2, this value is basically i 2 and the probabilities are p i 2. So, you see p i 2 is here and the corresponding utility is u i 1, u i 2. Finally, consider the deterministic one d u d 1 that means utility of the deterministic event and obviously, the probability being 1 it is just 2. So, that means, you have these two decisions. Now, let us consider and I will highlight it with the red color the less than sign, the equal to sign and the greater than sign. So, if you see the equations on the left hand side are the same equations on the right hand are the same for the three bullet points only the inequality equality sign is changing. If less than sign which means that I am more inclined to take the deterministic event because I want to avoid risk. So, you can understand from the situation if both are equal I mean different and if the right left hand side is more as in the last bullet point which means I am willing to take the risk even if the expected value for all the three cases may be the same is exactly the problems which I have discussed. So, another characteristic by which to classify risk aversion proper person a risk neutral person a risk seeker person we will consider this that is the second derivative would have a sign in one case it will be less than 0, in another case it will be equal to 0 and third case it will be greater than 0, the second derivative which means if the second derivative is less than 0 which means that utility function is increasing because obviously the first derivative is 0 is increasing, but the increasing is happening as a decreasing rate that means I am risk averse, I want to run away from risk. If it is basically the second derivative is 0 which means the utility is increasing that means u w by w that is d u w by d w that is the first derivative is positive and it is increasing as a constant rate that means an indifferent and in the third case if it so and this means I am a risk neutral person and in the third case if the second derivative is greater than 0 that means the first derivative obviously is 0 if it is and the second derivative is increasing it means that the util function is increasing at an increasing rate that means I am a risk seeker. So, these are the graphs. So, if we see the green one basically has a util function which is increasing but increasing at decreasing rate. The blue one is basically util function is increasing but increasing at a constant rate and the red one is basically a util function which is increasing but increasing at increasing rate. So, these are these are very obvious from these graphs. Now, let us come to the concept of marginal utility functions. So, marginal, marginal utility basically would be corresponding to the first derivative. Marginal utility functions looks like a concave curve, this is a risk aversion person that means I am avoiding risk. So, obviously, the second, the second derivative would be negative the, and I am risk averse. Marginal utility second bullet point says the marginal utility functions looks neither concave nor convex, which is a straight line. So, it is a risk neutral um, person. And in the last case, when the marginal utility function looks like a convex curve, it is that means it is increasing, that means the second derivative is greater than 0, which I just showed in the last graph. So, it is a risk seeking person because the second derivative u double prime is positive. So, which means that the marginal rate is increasing at a in decreasing rate for the risk averse person. The second bullet point is marginal utility rate is increasing at a constant rate which is a risk neutral person and the third bullet point is the basically the marginal utility rate is increasing at an increasing rate which is the risk seeking person. So, increasing decreasing being risk averse, increasing constant being risk neutral and increasing increasing being risk seeker. The first part obviously would be increasing, but as per the non cessation point it will always be positive. So, here are the graphs which I have tried to draw it as neatly as possible for you to make understand. So, on the y axis you are measuring the utility functions, on the x axis you are measuring the, the wealth, some amount of wealth 
and the green curve which you have if you see the dy dx of that or d u w d w it basically slowly tan of that angle slowly starts decreasing. So, hence it is, is a risk aversion. In a risk neutral person the dy dx or d u w d w is a straight line. So, tan of that angle does not change. So, it is basically risk neutral person and again I am measuring, measuring u w along the y axis and um, w values or the wealth values on the x axis. Similarly, if I take the utility analysis and the marginal rate for the curve which was the red one and if I plot again y axis being u w, x axis being w and if I find out the d y d x which is d u w d w uh, is increasing that means the tan of the angle is increasing hence it is basically a risk seeker person. So, few other important concepts which we are considering the utility analysis. So, consider the risk aversion person would basically as per the definition would be he would reject a fair gamble because his implication would be the second derivative is negative because that is why he is rejecting a fair gamble and going for the certainty event. A risk neutral person would be indifferent between the gam fair gamble and indifferent between certainty event. So, because in that case his or her second derivative would basically be 0 and a risk seeking person would be the person who will select, select the gamble because um, uh, technically the expected value for him or her remember that that is very important. So, the decision which is being taken by the human being him or her is based on his or her perception of risk only. So, coming to the third point which is mentioned I am again rereading re 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 it. So, select the person who is risk seeking would select the fair gamble because the second derivative is basically positive. Now, we will consider some of the properties of utility analysis. So, absolute risk aversion is the property which would be important for our discussion. So, absolute risk aversion property of a utility function where we consider the absolute functions is given by this property where we consider the negative of the ratio of the second derivative divided by the first derivative. So, so mathematically we are not going to deal with that because there are mathematical proofs for that, but that is not necessary. Why they are necessary will come to the practical implication of A w later on. A w and A prime and similarly we will consider another concept also which is the relative risk aversion. So, this is the absolute risk, risk aversion. So, if it is basically minus value of u double prime by u w u prime. So, u prime is always positive and there is a minus sign there. So, u double prime being negative being 0 and being positive with a negative sign would basically dictate that how the value of a is changing. Uh, that means, a changing means a prime has to be found out. So, that would be important for us to find out the properties of uh, the human being or decision maker who is, who is taking. So, the if you if you notice that that when you take the derivative of a prime a which when you find out the a prime there the actual the, the, the information will be coming out for the utility functions and you will see that in the later problems. So, I will just briefly discuss how we generally do that. We will assume basically an investor, this is just for the concept is nothing to do with the problem solving, this is just a overall feel that how you can basically approach the problem. We will assume an investor has wealth of amount W, whatever the W is and a security, security is basically a financial asset with an outcome which is represented by Z, which is basically random because security would have basically random returns. And we will consider z to be a fair gamble, whatever the amounts are not there fair gamble we will consider the properties half such that there is an equivalent um, uh, deterministic event which can replace that. And we will consider the expected value of that uh, fair gamble is 0 and the variance is given by some sigma square suffix z and the utility is basically given by um, uw. So, we will basically choose a wealth such that we can write this as two decisions in one decisions there is the wealth w c and another decision is the wealth w plus the security and based on that we will try to balance it and basically try to expand using Taylor series expansion and then trying to find out 
the Taylor series from the Taylor series expansion, we will try to find out the concept of absolute risk aversion, which I just mentioned uh, uh, on the last slide and then similarly find out the second derivative. We will come into the actual implications again I am mentioning as we solve the problems later on. So, with this I will end this third class and have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention.